Hey guys, Angry Beast here bringing you some Black Ops gameplay on the map WMD using the Stoner 63, messing around with some domination. And in this game, I want to talk a little bit more about light machine guns. Uh, a while back, I did one using the M60 on Nuketown, talked about light machine guns, but I want to talk about it a little bit more in this video and a little bit more in depth as to how I think the LMGs are underused as a whole. And how, while the as a general rule, the assault rifles will fare better, they do have the role in the game. And uh, probably the best light machine gun overall, if you're going to pick a light machine gun, is going to be the Stoner 63. The M60 is a good second choice because it's just got a large clip and it's the only one that has it. But for an overall LMG role, I think the Stoner 63 fits the bill perfectly. Uh, I, personally speaking, I like it better than the FAMAS. I say it's a better version of FAMAS. Let's compare some statistics. Now, both weapons get a 3-hit kill up close. The FAMAS does 35 damage up close, whereas the Stoner 63 does 40. They both have the same fire rate at 937.5 rounds per minute, so there's going to be no difference in time to kill up close, with the exception of a headshot. However, where this gun shines is getting headshots at medium to long range, where it can, where it can kill in two bullets at any freaking range with, head, with two headshots, I believe. I'm not sure if you can get the one headshot bonus. I don't believe you can in this game. So, if you get two headshots across the map, the guy's just going to drop. No other weapon class of the light machine guns can say that, and not even the Dragunov can say that. <laughs> um, so, what that tells me is that the, is that the, when you put a extended mags on this thing, you can basically take out people from medium to long range with good accuracy, and it doesn't have that much recoil. So, overall, this weapon really fits the build it's needed for a light machine gun. It's got good capacity. I mean, he has 30 rounds, but it also has a pretty fast reload. It's got good aim on size time with Sleight of Hand Pro, which is pretty much all I'd recommend on it, because it, while it does have a pretty fast reload time, I mean, it's not perfect by any means. You're still going to take time to reload the freaking magazine, because it is a light machine gun, and it has to have some drawbacks. But, basically, to me, it's a, it's a version of the FAMAS where you move a little bit slower, but you gain damage, you gain range, and you gain uh, headshot bonuses, which the FAMAS actually doesn't have, unless you're at really far distances, so... Um, if I were to use it, though, I'd definitely rec recommend Flak Jacket. As with any light machine gun, Flak Jacket's the best for your perk choice. The Scavenger's a good close second because this thing just has a crazy high rate of fire, but other than the Scavenger and Flak Jacket, nothing's going to really help you. You can't silence the light machine guns in this game, which makes Ghost a very bad perk choice. And uh, I don't think that... Uh, that lightweight's really going to help with the light machine gun. It's, it sounds good on paper. The lightweight makes me move faster, and I'm already moving slow. The light machine gun put me up at about assault rifle move rate. But in reality, when you try putting it on there, lightweight's just not going to help you. Uh, you're going to start rushing in a situation where you're not going to be effective with the light machine guns. But it, it can work out. I mean, the hip fire on this is just about as good as that of the PM63. You'll see me out hip fire a guy using the PM63 later on in the gameplay. So... You can't try and use it up close to the lightweight and steady aim, but I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, it's a better submachine gun than half the submachine guns when you run it like that, but that's not saying much. The submachine guns in this game are just bad overall. And a light machine gun should really be used from a defensive position where it has the advantage over assault rifles and, and snipers, because the sniper at medium range has to take time to acquire its target, and with the whole z scope zoom thing with this game where you don't exactly zoom in exactly where you're aiming, uh, it gives the light machine guns an advantage, whereas in other Call of Duties, the sniper rifles are going to fare a little bit better. Um, flak Jacket, though, is one of those things where it, it, it's dependent on the game mode. If you're playing a lot of Domination, you're capturing the flags, and Flak Jacket's a no-brainer. But when I'm trying to be a Slayer role with the with, with the Sonar 63, which is what I usually do because it's not the best for running on the flags. I mean, you're already moving slow. Uh, it, it can be a d tough choice between that and Scavenger. Scavenger will definitely increase your kill streak. So if you're going for the really high, the 8, 11, 9 kill streak setup, then I definitely recommend running Scavenger over Flak Jacket. But because I'm using rather low kill streaks, I'd say that uh, the Flak Jacket is a little bit better because it'll give me that a little bit of extra survivability. Ooh, yeah, shooting down a a spy plane for days. It'll give me that extra little bit of protection against the people who just throw grenades at you when they can't kill you, and, and that's quite common in this game. The grenades are extremely powerful, and it helps to take people out who are camping. Uh, so, while it's not the best choice in the game, Flak Jacket is probably not the best overall first-year perk. For a light machine gun roll, it's pretty good. Ooh, yeah, nice triple spray with the FAMAS. Yeah, I know, FAMAS, whatever, but... 
the Sonar 63 works just as well in a situation like that because it has the same uh, same characteristics of the FAMAS up close with a better headshot multiplier, which probably would have let me kill people a little bit faster there. My secondary in this game is the RPG. I definitely recommend a launch room using light machine guns. They already have pretty good ammo loadouts, and because of that, you don't need a pistol to fall back on. And even if you were to use a pistol, the pistols are pretty bad in this game. The only one I'd really recommend would be the Python, and I really only like using that in weapons with low capacity because... And a quick switch, a fast kill is nice, but when I already have a fast killing weapon with a lot of capacity, there's no real reason to switch. But the RPG does give you some situational advantages, like right here, I hope I should have gotten him, but you know, the RPGs fly a little bit awkward. It gives you situational advantage where I can go around the corner with it out, shoot a rocket in the general direction where they'll be, and pray to God that it works. Uh, Rick, here's what I was talking about. I outspray that guy with the PM63, and that's what the stoner's good for. I mean, it, it's effective up close. It's probably the best up close light machine gun, even though it doesn't have the two hit kill with, of the M60. It has a very high rate of fire, that equal to that of the Moss, and when you have that type of rate of fire, you don't really need the hip fire, so. A hip fire to be, like, perfect, like, uh. Like the FAMAS or the AUG, so uh, I just rely on the rate of fire when I hit fire just like that. I mean, I never really should have gotten that kill without aiming, but it's just how the weapons work in this game. Hip fire is extremely effective, and I think that's one thing that is very overlooked in Call of Duty. Um, hip fire is a skill that isn't that much of a skill, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's something that you just instinctively do when you have a gun in your hand in a Call of Duty. You just press the fire button, you don't even think to aim. But it's, it's a skill in that you have to use it situationally. Um, hip firing always is never going to get you very far in a Call of Duty game because hip firing is not the most effective way to kill someone. It, it's helpful up close because so, you don't have to aim and take the time to pick your shots. But at a distance, you know, you're not going to hit anything, obviously. Your hip fire cone is just huge with any weapon in the game. You shouldn't be able to hip fire anything from across the map. That's why I disagree with the people who no scope them. Try and quick scope across the map. Like I said, I can do exactly what I just did with the FAMAS back there with the Stoner 63. No issue. Unfortunately, there's a the last guy with the science a little. Um, hip fire across the map is something I wouldn't recommend, but if you're up close, don't try to aim with a weapon like the stoner. It's aimed on sight time is a little bit sl slower than the FAMASs, I believe. Uh, it may actually be the same after the patch. I'm not quite sure about the numbers. There haven't been anything officially released by Treyarch since the patch, so... I'm going to say they're about equal, and uh, just like the FAMAS, this weapon is devastating from the hip if used properly. And slapping steady aim on this is actually a very good choice. If you aren't going to use sleight of hand on it, if you feel like you don't need the extra aim on sight time and reload speed, then definitely go with steady aim. It's going to help you out a lot more than sleight of hand overall. Sleight of hand just gives you a little bit of advantage when you're not sitting there aiming on sights all the time like I kind of am here. Another good perk choice with this, though, is Hardened. I, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised when I tried Hardened on this thing, because Hardened is one of those perks that's very situational, and most of the time it doesn't help you out. But if you notice in this game, I, I kill a couple people through walls already. Ooh, yeah, I pick up a nice gold PM63. But when you're killing people through walls already, when you add Hardened on there with a weapon like this, you almost always kill in three hits, no matter what you're shooting through. In fact, you can kill in three hits, believe, through concrete, even with, uh, with, uh, with stoner and hardened on so you gain all the advantages that you would for uh running the m60 with hardened and you get the extra rate of fire and better controllability so there really isn't too much you lose by using hardened it's one of those perks that's passive but it can really improve a weapon's performance now while the recoil isn't the worst in the light machine gun category it's definitely a little bit hard more hard to control than something like uh with HK-21 or RPK because it's very random. It reminds me a lot of the FAMAS's recoil, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it, it's kind of random, but it does tend a little bit up to the right, which gives it good advantages in close quarters gunfights. I mean, if you know exactly where the recoil is going, you don't have to compensate it for it as much. And you can basically put your shots on target and expect them to go exactly where they're going to go. But I think that its recoil is a little bit higher than, say, the M60s because it's just rate of fire really, really doesn't help it that much. But the game's over. It ends up being a 30 and 11. Playing defensive, get eight defends there with the Sonar 6 or 3. And that's how the light machine guns should be used. Um, they should be used in an aggressive role. Using them in defensive is definitely in your best interest. But anyways, guys, I'm Angry Beast. I'm signing out. I'll catch you guys in my next video.